Hello, welcome to another episode of Disney Dreamlight Valley. This time I am cleaning up and sort of decorating the Forest of Valor. Now, this was the first biome that I cleaned up and decorated that I didn't have as much stuff to put into. But that's okay because it turns out really nice in the end. I stopped in at Scrooge's uh, shop and I grabbed a couple of new items which you will see before the end. And yeah, it just, it ends up looking really, really nice. This whole area right here more or less basically becomes Vanellope's biome, her candy biome. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, Maybe I should just get rid of all the Forest of Valor trees and just put in the candy trees. Can we get more of the candy trees or are we limited to just those ones that we got from Vanellope? I'll have to check on that because I'm not sure. One thing you'll notice is that I do take the lemon trees out of this area and then I grab them, what's it from? The Glade of Trust, I think, is the other spot they were in. Maybe the Sunlit Plateau? I'm not 100% sure I remember anymore. But I grab them from there and I place them in the... Um, in the peaceful meadow. A lot has changed in my valley since I made this video. I plan on doing a live stream later this month where I'm gonna do a walkthrough of the entire valley um, of everything that we have cleaned up, decorated, looking nicer, at least a little bit nicer because it's cleaned up anyways and all the little tweaks and changes that I've made over time. From this point forward, once I get caught up with all my videos, I'm gonna say that when we reach, um, what's the last video? I don't even remember what the last video I have recorded is. Let me check on that. The last video that I have is i think believe it or not it's actually the cleaning up and redecorating of the forgotten lands well at least the start of the cleaning up and redecorating of the forgotten lands so that's something exciting to look forward to in just a few videos not that many just a few and it should be up by the end of the week that this video is released on so that's a super exciting as well oh that's one of the new items that I got or that is the new item I don't remember anyways it's really cute it's room beauty and the beast it's a little picnic blanket with some pillows and some can it's adorable you have to see it up close um I'll I'll make sure to stop there and focus on it during the walkthrough so we can really look at it anyways I realized uh, see, what I did was that last video that you watched, after I placed Vanellope's house, I stopped recording for that video. I took a break and I did this. So this video is kind of the halfway point of that other video, if you will. And I realized while I was doing that that Vanilla B wanted a racetrack, not just a path out her front door, but a racetrack she could race her car on. So that's why I built that thing in the center there uh, to look like a miniature racetrack for her to drive her car on. Her car will not be drivable. It's just a furniture piece that you can place down. But she did ask for it, so I decided to put it in there. To be honest with you, I will probably change this all up again in the very, probably not too distant future anyways. But for now, I thought it was cute. I added a little racetrack there. Um, 
What else did I do? I did clean up a lot of the trees. Oh, right. I moved Elsa. No, I moved Anna and Kristoff and Olaf up to Frosted Heights. I think their castle is supposed to be in Frosted Heights. I mean, it looks like an ice castle, does it not? It seems to me like, and maybe I don't know because I never saw the second Frozen movie. I know Elsa is the queen of Arendelle, so that probably means that she gets to live in Arendelle Castle, but don't uh, Kristoff and Anna live with her, or do they have a house of their own? And if so, isn't it just another Arendelle castle? Why is their castle in this game a frozen castle? That seems like it would be more Elsa's thing. And I mean, technically, Anna's still a princess of Arendelle? I don't know. It, it gets a little confusing <laughs> because I haven't watched most of the movies and maybe they're not going directly off of the movies on these because, again, I didn't watch most of the movies, so I don't know. Like, like Wally's house, like, that makes no sense to me. Does Wally have a house that looks like that in his movie? I don't know. I've never seen it. I did think that his house worked really, really well in the Forest of Valor, just because uh, it's one of those big, heavy-duty, like, machinery-type truck things, and I don't know, it fits. <laughs> Honestly, Merlin's house fits in the forest better than it does the meadow as well, but here's the second thing that I tried to do. I tried to match the foliage. The one that I'm having the trouble with, though, is the lemon trees because the foliage is halfway between the peaceful meadow and the forest of valor. It doesn't quite match either, and it certainly doesn't match any of the other biomes. So I am struggling with where to put the lemon trees a little bit, and I do slightly regret moving, which you will see here, maybe towards the end, or did I not? I might not have even shown it yet. <gasps> okay, so eventually the raspberry bushes do make it to the Forest of Valor. I do make little tweaks a lot. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I do kind of regret that. Okay, we're, we're not going to talk about the little tweaks. We'll talk about them when I do the live stream sometime around Halloween um, when we do the walkthrough of the valley and I talk about all the little tweaks that I've made. But suffice it to say, I did struggle a lot with what to put where and I've heard a lot of people just take all of their fruit trees and put them in one place as an orchard and then all of their berry bushes and put them in one place as like almost like a berry farm type of thing. I didn't think of that before I worked on this biome so it didn't occur to me to do that before I worked on this biome. But now that I've thought about it, I kind of want to go back and do that a little bit. Building paths in this game is ridiculously difficult, but building diagonal paths in this game takes such a long time as almost obnoxious. <laughs> It really, truly is so annoying. Maybe other people don't have as hard a time as I do, but this is so annoying to have to do for me. Uh, but I did eventually get this. And uh, you're going to see some stuff that might look a little bare or weird. Uh, did I mention this in the last two? I don't think I did because in the Peaceful Meadow... Oh, well, yeah, I guess I kind of mentioned it in the Peaceful Meadow video because there are some empty spaces or there were some empty spaces in the Peaceful Meadow where I was waiting to put other characters at. Um, and that kind of, the same thing kind of ends up here, but to a greater extent. I feel like the Forest of Valor is larger than the Peaceful Meadow, 
maybe even larger than Dazzle Beach just because of the amount of space you have to build and decorate versus Dazzle Beach is more than half taken up by water. So it's a lot of space <laughs> to fill in. And when you're early mid game like I am, I mean, at this point of decorating this Forest of Valor here, I was very early mid game. I didn't hit mid, like late early mid game. <laughs> I hope that makes sense, but like, I was not quite mid game, but I was not quite early game either, but I was closer to being early game when I recorded this video. By the time we get to the decorating or cleaning up of the Forgotten Lands, I'm a little bit closer to being mid game, or even... I am probably fully considered mid-game at that point. I'm just a little behind in a lot of the quests, to be honest. Which, it's weird because I have... By the time we get to that video, I have all the lands opened. But, I'm really, really far behind on quests. So... It's kind of a weird space to be in. I'm not doing everything in the order that it should have or would have been done in had I been playing the game all the way through from the beginning when it was first released. But honestly, I mean, there are other people who are going to be starting this game. There have been other people who have started this game as brand new players every week. And there will continue to be new players every week. And so, can I really keep using that as an excuse? No. My thing was, I know that they're releasing Chapter 2. In their roadmap, they call it Chapters. I don't know why streamers and YouTubers decided to call it Acts. Because I've never seen the Dreamlight team call it Axe, Act 1, Act 2. In fact, in their roadmap for 2023, for late 2023, after October, um, so November and December, they say it's the end of a chapter. So it's the end of Chapter 1. And presumably that means chapter 2 will be beginning at that point. And me knowing that, and knowing that I primarily dedicate my time to The Sims, I was, I guess I was just trying to rush through the first chapter, or as other YouTubers and streamers are calling it, the first act. Uh, so that I could be there when the second part comes out with everybody else. But I guess it really doesn't matter because new people are joining the game every day. And it's not like they're going to ban me from moving on to the next part if I'm not quite there yet. You know what I mean? Anyways, um... What you saw me doing right there for a few minutes was figuring out where I wanted all of my pathways to go. I wanted to walk around to the little sitting area that I created and to the pillar area um, and then walk to the well and the, what are they called, stalls and that kind of stuff so I could see where I would be walking the most and then cover the path in that area. Now I know things about the future of this game that you might know if you watched other Dreamlight Valley videos yourself or if you haven't yet. <laughs> I know things about the future of this chapter or act that says that all the work I've been going to to make special areas for the pillars, like little, almost little parks within each biome for the pillars is going to be wasted time. I'm not going to tell you any more than that other than that it's wasted time and I'm going to have to go back 
and do some more decorating videos in the future. But that's okay. That means plenty more decorating opportunities for the future. And once I get caught up with all these videos, every bit of decorating I do, every change that I make, all the things will be in videos from now on. I'm not going to skip anything like I have in the past. As you can see at this point in the building, I pause a lot to stop and think about what I want to do next and how I want to handle each thing. Um, I should have cut all those pauses out, but I didn't realize they were there until I started doing the voiceover. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyways, um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, thus to this point, or to the point of... Um, the video where I'm going to clean up and redo the Forgotten Lands, I just felt like I needed to rush to get through everything to keep up with everyone. And that was dumb of me. I shouldn't have done that. And so now, at this point, um, I'm realizing that I'd rather take my time and just, uh you know, make good videos. <laughs> That's what I want to do. I want to make good videos. And if I'm behind everybody else, then it's fine. Uh, here you see me going around picking stuff up. Anytime you leave the furniture or build or decorate menu, stuff starts spawning and then you can't place things because some of that spawned stuff can't be picked up and moved. So here I am running around and I get distracted by a squirrel. No, not a squirrel, a raccoon. I get distracted by a raccoon, so I start chasing the raccoon, and then I remember what I was supposed to be doing, so I go back, and I start picking stuff up again, and then I go back to decorating. I'm leaving that in the video just because it's hilarious. <laughs> Anyways. I understand now that I don't need to keep up with everybody else, so I want to just um, make good videos from now on, and I'll try not to cut any of the even minor tweaks that I make. I'll try not to cut those out anymore, uh, and I'll do lots of decorating videos because I love doing decorating videos. I love building and decorating things. I think yeah, I think we're coming up pretty much to the end of the actual speed build part here. I just, I think I finish up a little bit of the path. And then I go down and I let Scrooge know that I finished the Forest of Valor and we are done. So let's go take a walk around the forest. Okay, before we go up there... Um, apparently I didn't actually record the walkthrough when I made the original videos. So you're gonna see the tweaks that I made, and you can also see that I have the Fairy Godmother quest opened up right now. So you got a little bit of spoilers. Oh my goodness, Donald. You got a little bit of spoilers here. So anyways, this is my Forest of Valor now. Now obviously it's not completely completely finished. Oh, sorry. Let me slow down and pan a little bit slower. It's not completely finished, obviously, and it's had some pretty big tweaks to it since I last recorded, but let's go for a walk and talk about it. So obviously it's a forest, so it needed lots of forest areas, and then I put this little cute sitting area here with a birdhouse and some lanterns for at night or lampposts with another telescope for Merlin to look out over Dazzle Beach and the pillar. Wally's house is over here and we can cut this way and either go across to the sort of makeshift candy biome or we can go this way past the wells and Goofy and Kristoff's stalls. 
Now there's plenty of space here. I would love to add uh, Beast and Bell's castle, maybe right here, or potentially right in this area here. And then we go around the corner here, and I've moved the raspberries up here. Oh, I missed a flower back there. Whoops. So this is a house skin, one of many that you can buy on the premium shop. And you can put it over your house, or you can place up to five of them, I believe, throughout the valley. I decided to place this one here for more opportunities to fill up my energy bar, but also more opportunities to either store stuff or decorate <laughs> that's what i was thinking i was thinking we could use this as a little fall winter cabin area and um decorate it accordingly but yeah i placed that house there and then you come here and there are two lampposts letting you know hey there's stairs here going up to the frosted heights and then we cross over this rocky bridge and you can see I added more apple trees. If you go this way, you go to the waterfall and up to Frosted Heights again. And you kind of meet up with the vanilla, vanilla Bee's racetrack. But if you go back this way, then you see Vanilla Bee's house here in her little candy forest there. I am expanding her racetrack to three tiles wide on every side, at least for now. That may change in the future. I don't know yet. And then you have the little cozy picnic area that I made. So, oh, I forgot a tree stump. I pretend you don't see that tree stump. So this little picnic blanket is from Beauty and the Beast. And I just thought it was so adorable. And it fits so perfectly in this little, like nook area that was created by this little corner of the forest that I just had to add it in there. Obviously someday there's probably going to be a character living here or something and we will have to move this somewhere else. But for now I thought it was really cute so I placed it there. And yeah that's my well, I mean, technically, Forest of Valor over here and makeshift candy biome over here, at least for now. And you got to see some of the little tweaks that I made over the last couple of weeks since doing this biome. If you enjoyed this video, if you're enjoying this series, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!